In our paper, uh, we are analyzing the long-run effects of elite higher education. In particular, we're looking at the effects uh, in the marriage market and in terms of intergenerational outcomes. In terms of marriage market outcomes, we are looking at the decision uh, to get married. We want to know whether being admitted to a more elite university affects your decision to get married, but also affects uh, your decision who to get married to. That is, we're interested in whether the characteristics of the spouse um, are different if you're admitted to a more elite institution. In the second area, we're looking at the outcomes um, uh, on children, and we are interested in whether being admitted to a more elite institution affects people's decision to have children, um, the, the number of children they have, the timing of the children, but also the characteristics of the children. That is, how, you know, how good uh, children's opportunities are later in life. We capture this by looking at basically their performance um, on standardized test scores. So to address uh, the, our research question of interest, to understand the long-run effects of elite education, we are facing two important challenges. One is the identification challenge of a causal, to identify a causal effect of elite education. And secondly, there are important data requirements. Concerning the first part, uh, it's important to identify a causal effect of attending a more elite university because the people who attend those universities tend to be selected into them. So their characteristics are different from the characteristics of people not attending these universities, which would make their long-run outcomes already different, even without attending any elite uh, institution at all. We're making use of a context where people are um, centrally assigned to universities based on individuals' preferences over universities and their university entrance test score. Everyone who is interested in a certain institution enters uh, a list uh, is ranked according to their entrance test score. If the institution has 100 slots, for example, the first 100 uh, highest performing uh, applicants are admitted. Person number 101 is not admitted. And so the method is comparing basically the outcomes of the individual just admitted into the more elite institution versus those that just missed the cutoff. And those guys are very similar in terms of their characteristics, uh, ex ante, but um, differ in terms of uh, the treatment, they differ in terms of having attended the elite institution or not. This leads me to the, to the second challenge, uh, which, which is related to data requirement. Um, so the method that we're using is a regression discontinuity design. In order to compare people at those thresholds, we need a very big data set. We need basically administrative data on university applicants. We need to be able to follow them until uh, basically their, their 40s or so to observe their marriage uh, and fertility decisions. And in order to do so, we use historic data on university applicants in the early 90s, which we uh, scanned and digitized. In addition, in order to uh, match this information um, with basically people's long run outcomes in terms of spouses and, and children, we managed to convince the Ministry of, of Justice uh, in Chile to, to match us this data. And so we have information also on spouses and children's uh, outcomes. I'm going to talk about uh, our findings in the marriage market, our findings in terms of intergenerational effects, and then I briefly talk about the mechanisms behind those effects that we find. Firstly, we find uh, very important marriage market returns to being admitted to a more elite university, but only on the part of, of women. Women who are admitted to a more elite university have husbands who are substantially smarter in terms of having a high university entrance score. They are more likely to have attended a top uh, institution and they come from a more privileged family background. For men, we don't find this, this type of effect. Secondly, we're looking at uh, children's outcomes. So we do not find any uh, effects in terms of fertility, no differences in terms of the likelihood to have a child the number of children or the timing of children, but we find important effects in terms of children's outcomes. These sort of intergenerational returns accrue both to men and women to a very similar degree. That is, if a man or a woman is admitted to a more elite institution, the children are performing substantially better in terms of uh, mandatory standardized tests many years later which with important implications for these children's opportunities in life. In terms of mechanisms behind the marriage market returns, um, 
we find evidence that uh, universities act as meeting places, so that contributes, but there must be, so must be an important role also uh, in terms of individuals getting more attractive if they're admitted to an elite institution and or their social network being very different, which uh, affects also their marriage outcomes. In terms of uh, the intergenerational effects, we find uh, we find again interesting differences between men and women. So while overall the intergenerational returns are the same for men and women, the channels are different. For men, the key channel seems to be resources. So being admitted to a more elite institution uh, increases the investment that these, these men uh, do into their children, which appears to be behind this intergenerational effect. For women, we don't find the same effect in terms of investment, but we have shown in the marriage market section that they have a, a substantially uh, higher quality husband, which uh, is likely to be behind the intergenerational effect. From an academic point of view, um, our findings help to uh, explain or shed light on, uh, on an important uh, puzzle, the so-called college enrollment puzzle that people have been talking about uh, for a while now. In the past, women uh, were underrepresented in universities. Uh, by now, women have not only kind of uh, caught up, but they have actually overtaken men in terms of their uh, college attendance rates. That's surprising given the fact that female labor force participation uh, is still quite a bit lower uh, of women compared to men, both in, in the extensive margin, but in, the, in addition in the intensive margin, because part-time uh, work is still uh, very prevalent. And so that means that it's hard to argue that labor market returns can explain why women would attend college to a, to a, a greater extent. Now, our findings directly uh, point to an alternative uh, or a more, more convincing uh, mechanism, and that is that uh, university attendance has important marriage market returns that are particularly relevant for women. And so that might explain why by now actually women are attending uh, universities to a greater extent. Generally, one important return for society is that individuals uh, you know, attending university or attending elite universities have substantially higher labor market earnings and therefore pay higher taxes. If, on the other hand, uh, the big part of the return is actually marriage market return, so women attending these institutions um, are not uh, going into the labor market to a much greater extent or do not have uh, higher earning jobs, but it's mostly a tool to find a um, higher quality spouse. This sort of return to the society in terms of taxes, at least, is not there. Raising the question, you know, again, uh, about, you know, should we subsidize uh, higher education? Should we subsidize elite institutions in particular? To what extent? So we need to know what are kind of the, the effects on, on, on society um, in, in this respect. We show that uh, elite education affects who is uh, matching with whom. It's obvious that the degree of assortative mating uh, has, has uh, critical implications for the inequality, for inequality across households, for social stratification, uh, but also for the mobility or immobility uh, of a society. Our paper also shows that one way in which uh, individuals transmit their uh, their human capital and their social status to the next generation is via this vehicle of, of elite uh, education. This raises a number of, of uh, important uh, questions so to uh, investigate this link uh, a lot more between uh, elite education systems and societal outcomes via the marriage market. That's, I think, a very relevant topic for the future, both in terms of academic research but also in the, in the policy debate, because the fact that education policy can have uh, these very long run and far reaching consequences on society uh, via the marriage market has largely been neglected.